The Dallas Mavericks got back on track tonight with a pretty convincing win over the Cleveland Cavaliers. I know, not much of a surprise there, but Dallas nevertheless does earn a 131-111 to road victory against the Cavaliers, pretty much moving them to 3-0 and on the road for the first time since, I believe, 2010. So, hey, not for nothing, the AAC might not have been super friendly yet with some of those hard matchups with Portland and the Lakers, but at the very least, Dallas has managed to keep things going on the road. Uh, quick notes in this game, Luka Doncic gets another triple-double, his 11th overall, second in a row. That moves him, he's already second in all-time history for the Mavericks for most career triple-doubles. That gives him now three through six games, and in a fourth game, he missed one by one assist. So he's right there on track. Luka got off to a crazy good start in this game for Dallas. He ends up going now. His his rebounding and overall attack has been incredibly balanced. In 28 minutes, he had 27 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 assists, I believe, going into the fourth quarter. Wasn't needed a whole lot there. I think on the whole, he still played... 34 minutes overall, final stat line was 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 15 assists. 5 of 10 on threes, 6 of 6 at the line. He's really, really improved this year on the free throw line, so I'm happy to see that he's addressed that and that it's paid off. Shooting the ball, 9 of 17, missed a couple shots late. Seemed like he was heat-checking himself at times on some threes. And, you know, Luka's going to do that. He's going to try that step back. He's going to do what he can to make an impact there, so... The crazy thing with Luka is not only was he incredibly efficient, again, at one point at the end of the third quarter, he had 28 minutes, 27 points, 12 and 12. He's controlling a game pretty much across the board, but it's more than that. It's the way he's getting his teammates involved that is the big thing. Obviously, if you have 12 assists, you're getting your teammates involved, but there are countless other opportunities in each game where he's setting guys up and it's just a matter of, hey, you got to make that shot or whatever. So he's... He's been really impressive. KP got off to a slow start offensively. He did establish himself in the later parts of the third quarter and then especially in the fourth quarter. But they, I I feel like Dallas is kind of leaving KP out on an island offensively too much. I don't think he's super comfortable right now creating his own shot consistently. And they've not really set him up enough. They need to, I think, feed him a little bit more because you did have a situation where what was it, like three minutes to go in the half, and KP was sitting on like a grand total of one shot attempt. Let's see here. I got the note here somewhere on that. Well, all the same. Oh, here it is. One shot attempt so far with 8.51 left in the first half. So they they just, you can't wait that long. You can't wait a quarter and a third of a quarter just to get him going for his second shot. Like, that's that's crazy. I agree that if you want an effective KP, the most effective KP you can get, you need to get him going early. And Luka, you know, being a maestro and all that, he needs to really feed the ball to KP and get KP going. Now, in the case the other night against the Lakers, KP did get going quickly with eight quick points, but then the offense completely went away from him, and it seemed like when they wanted to start coming back to him, he wasn't comfortable and he had lost his rhythm and he was basically shot for the game. So there's some things to consider there, but KP rim protection wise was fantastic tonight. Six blocks. I believe it was his 10th game with six plus blocks in his career. So he was an absolute force on that end of the court. It was just a matter of finding that balance with the offensive game. And he did. He he started hitting some shots later in the game as well. Uh, Again, ends up with a... Uh, 18 points, six blocks, and nine boards. The rebounding has really improved for him as well. I'm very pleased with that. KP shot 55% from the field and 67% from three. If you're giving me that kind of production, dude, I'm happy with that. Now, his points ended up not being a big game at all. It was a, a, a so-so game, but again, he didn't really get going until the final frame, it felt like, so... That's an area I want Dallas as a team to improve, to get him more incorporated early on, and that's something that Luka can work on too, is getting him the ball and getting KP established because they are best when they are a duo, and even though KP had a big impact on this game, it felt mostly like the Luka show with KP making spot appearances here and there, and I want to see that improve a little bit, balance out a little bit. Let's see here, so... Here's from All Things Mavs, some context for KP's solid game here. 
So KP stat line of 18, 9, and 6 blocks. The last Maverick to put up that kind of line was Dirk in 2006 when he had 27 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 blocks for people who somehow don't think Dirk was much of a shot blocker. All I'm saying. So this was this was a really quality game from Dallas. Uh, I will call this out. I am bummed out that the last two games there are seemingly no minutes for Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson was my dark horse to be a starter. That looks like a bad prediction, bad take on my part. He is not getting that role. He had four minutes in tonight's game. Uh, is that right here? Yeah, he ended up getting six because of garbage time, but whatever. He had late in the game. He still had four minutes, three points, and a rebound, one of two shooting. Not a whole lot of opportunity, but he did hit a nice trailing three in this game. I want to see some more Justin Jackson. I think Justin Jackson brings a lot to the table. It's just a matter of maybe what Rick feels uh, defensively with the starting lineup need. Dodo has been a very good defender for us this year. Dodo, for his credit, had 10 points, five boards. Not much of a, a three-point shooter or anything like that, but hey, it is what it is. Dodo ends up taking 23 minutes compared to six for Jackson. And again, two of those minutes come at the very end in garbage time. So I have very mixed feelings on that. I think they're more comparable than the minutes and everything seem to suggest, but it is what it is. Jalen Brunson bounced back well in this game as well. He gets 14 points for the Mavericks inserted into the starting lineup. Two rebounds and six assists. That is a very solid showing from him. And the reason I wanted to call that out specifically is because he's kind of been flying under the radar for having a rough, rough start to the year, actually. I'm trying to find the exact thing here I took a note of, but he was shooting something like 36% overall from the field on the year and his three-point shot was not falling he just wasn't he wasn't turning the ball over but he certainly oh here it is 36.6 percent from the field and 28.6 percent from three through the first five games of the year yowza shout out to uh val Bullock. hopefully i said that right our new subscriber uh but yeah brunson had himself a rough start through the first five games so it was really encouraging to see him come out tonight and shoot the ball a lot better in this game. It really added a lot. Oh, Brunson was also 50% from the free throw line in that stretch too. So Brunson goes 6 of 11 from the field, 2 for 6 on 3. Only had one turnover here, so hey, plus 5 in that regard. I'm I'm pleased with what I'm seeing from him. His overall plus minus still turns out to be a 7. Luka a plus 15. Hey man, shout out to the guy at the bottom of this list here, Majanovic. Uh, 12 points, 8 rebounds in 15 minutes. The dude was a plus 25 on the game. I want to see a lot more Boban here. I know it took us 3 or 4 games to finally get him into the game, uh, into a game this season. We still have not seen J.J. Barea, but Boban definitely in small doses like that, 15 minutes, I think he can make a lot of of a lot of impact for us. And Dallas ran a really big lineup out there at one point where you had Dorian Finney Smith, who's six ten or six nine, excuse me, uh, with a six eleven wingspan. You had Marjanovic and you had KP out there. So and Delon Wright. I can't remember who the fifth guy was out there with him at the time, but Dallas was running a very big lineup. It was probably Hardaway just for a little bit of three point shooting. Hardaway Jr., speaking of him, he feels just like the Wes Matthews at this point of this this particular Mavericks team. Uh, I still have very mixed feelings on him, but he gives you 12 points off the bench as well. 5 of 12 shooting, 2 of 6 from 3. There, there's a lot to like here for this game for the Mavericks uh, and getting the riding the ship and getting back on track here. Obviously, KP's rim protection much better in this game. He didn't make much of a rim protecting difference against the Lakers. Uh, his rebounding has been very good this year. I just want them to get him going early and to to work a little bit more of a two-man game with him and Luka. That doesn't seem like it's quite there yet, but it doesn't seem terribly far off. I just think they're not – they need to go to it a little bit more. And Luka, man, you talk about a one-man wrecking machine. This guy looks like he has future MVP written all over him. This is a guy who came in averaging – what was he? he was averaging like 28 points coming into this game. And, you know, obviously he's a tick below that, but his his stat line is otherworldly. There's already fair, I mean, there's already a fair number of people debating whether or not he, in, at some point in his career, 
could end up averaging a triple-double a la Russell Westbrook or Oscar Robinson. I don't know about that, but I can certainly tell you with him averaging 26.2 points, 9.6 boards, and 8.4 assists coming into tonight, it's not insane. Now, the number, the 42 triple-double thing that Russ did, you know, Oscar did it in 41 and Russ did it in 42, uh, th- those aren't going to be touched, I don't think, necessarily. But I think Luka could flirt with that achievement. I don't know if he'll get there, but that's not to say, oh, well, if he doesn't do that, then you know he's not on that level. I disagree very, very much. I think Luka, I don't think those numbers, I don't think an accomplishment like that, like it's a cool stat, but I don't think it's anything that's going to move him towards like that's something I have to go chase. He's already said, like he just wants to lead the league in assists at some point like he he thinks he can do it this year i don't know about that you know there's a lot of competition for a thing like that trey young uh you know that's an area where uh, if you want to talk about areas of his game he's been phenomenal this year too if you want to talk about areas of his game where he's probably just as good as luca that's right there just as good or maybe even a tick better but luca no no disrespect at all he is phenomenal passing the ball setting things up seeing things as they're developing I mean, some of the passes he's throwing, whether it's a lob, whether it's a chucked pass behind his head, like the thumbnail of this video shows, he just has like a, a second sight almost where he can just see where, where guys are going, where the ball is moving, and just make something out of it. So uh, one thing with Luca, I want to see him. I, I think he, because he makes so many great plays, I think it emboldens him a little bit. And I think he... I don't know if I want to say he tries to trick it up a little too much, but sometimes you'll see him make a bad turnover just because you see, like he thinks he can set something up and so he'll throw a riskier pass because he knows, oh, well, I'm going to burn them with this four or five, six times in this game. So let me try something here now. And then he'll throw a riskier pass that maybe you wouldn't generally throw. And, you know, it leads to a turnover going the other way. Those aren't great. You want to see those cut down a little bit, but all the same, it is a very, very encouraging start for the Mavericks. Uh, now moving to four and two on the year, three and zero on the road again for the first time since 2010. That was the championship season. That was the 2010-11 season, I believe. Uh, Dallas shot over 50 percent in this game. Defense was much better. 41 percent from the field for Cleveland. Kevin Love got really cooking early. I think he had like 13 or 15 points in the first quarter. He ends the game with 29. from the field, 5 of 11 from 3, 1 block, 1 steal, 8 boards. Yeah, Kevin Kevin Love had himself a very nice game. I know people always want to throw his name out there when they talk about potential trade targets for the Mavericks. He would certainly add a lot in terms of scoring and even add a bit in rebounding, both of which would help Dallas. But he's not a defensive guy, really. And I I don't like the age. He's over 30. I know that. I want to say he's like 32 so it doesn't fit the window or the time frame. So I'm, I'm just out on that. I, I don't, it, it's certainly, especially with the, his current contract, it's not anything that I want to look at. Certainly not a trade deadline move I would target, but I understand on paper why someone might look at it and be intrigued. Other uh, notes here, Dallas 49% from three. Yeah, here, here's, here's a big thing, man. When you're 50% practically from three, 20 made threes, you're going to win most nights. Like that's uh, an incredibly high percentage and to make 20 of them. Yeah. That's going to do serious damage. Uh, free throws, not as many attempts as previously, but 11 of 13. So as a team, they're doing much better. I, I know Boban missed one and I can't remember who else missed the other one, but very good showing for Dallas there. The turnovers, they were still, they still had more turnovers than Cleveland at 13 compared to nine, but I do like, that they held on to the ball better. They had 22 turnovers the night or the game before against the Lakers. 34 assists to 24 for Cleveland, so they won that. Hey, second game in a row, they won the rebounding margin by double digit. 51 to 41. They got 11 offensive boards. Cleveland got 12. Blocks, Dallas, all of them KP with six. Cleveland got four. And uh, Dallas, 21 fouls compared to 14. So this was a, a very complete game from Dallas a little bit of a slow start a little bit it it took them some time to start pulling away but you know what I'm not shocked about that and hey it makes total sense that this would be a game that Luka would be up for you know he had a triple double last year in Cleveland as well and Cleveland is one of those cities too that it makes a lot of sense for Luka to show out because Cleveland as Tim McMahon points out on Twitter is the American city with the largest Slovenian population 
Last year when he went off in Cleveland, he had 35, 11, and 6. So not a triple-double like I thought. 35, 11, and 6 last year. And uh, got off to a very quick start this this game with 13, 4, and 4 in the first quarter as well. So a lot, a lot of encouraging things there uh, for Dallas and for the Mavericks. It makes sense why Luka likes going off in those games as well in front of uh, a very much a crowd that's accustomed to his fellow countrymen and all that. So... Not much else to say here in this game. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm happy with this. Dallas now has a favorable stretch in their schedule here. After this game, Dallas has a fairly quick turnaround, I want to say. I'm pulling up the schedule here. They got uh, the Orlando Magic next back at the AAC Wednesday. And then Friday, they host the New York Knicks. So KP is going to get his revenge game here this will be a very interesting matchup i think kp is going to see lower minutes against orlando not that i think orlando is a bad team necessarily i mean they were a playoff team in the east last year and you know vucevic is good too i i just think that they're not gonna they're not gonna cut his minutes against the knicks i don't see that happening at all and so i'm not worried about that at all i think they're going to give him maybe a smidge extra rest there and set him up for his match against the Knicks. Oh, quick call out here. Speaking of the Knicks, I saw this on Twitter earlier. Uh, this is from, Va- let's see, Mike Vorkanov. Vorkanov uh, on Twitter talking about, for the Knicks, R.J. Barrett, their standout rookie, who said he wants to dunk on uh, KP this year. R.J. Barrett played 41 minutes in the Knicks' 113-92 loss, already entering the night, leading the NBA in minutes. When asked about this, Fitzdale said, He's got the day off tomorrow. We've got to get off this load management crap. Latrell Sprewell averaged 42 minutes for a season. This kid's 19 years old. Drop it. Dude, you are going to waste another high-end draft pick by either burning his ass out or leading to his injury, overexposing him. This is Mr. Get Off My Lawn, Mr. Uh, Screw Analytics. I'm going to go with old school mentality. It's just like in baseball when you have every now and then the organization who's like, ah, this pitch count stuff is nonsense. I don't care about 100 pitches. I'm going to let my guy go out there and throw 140. And then the guy needs Tommy John surgery after like a year and a half of that kind of workload. And oh, suddenly, suddenly you've lost a serious investment. You've lost a major piece of your team. You're going to burn through the kid super fast. He's going to end up tearing something or having some kind of injury like I'm not hoping that at all, but good God, you want to talk about a franchise that doesn't know what the hell it's doing. That's what the Knicks look like with this. As if everything else that we know in recent history isn't bad enough, that alone has me just face palming. If if Dallas was doing this to Luka or, you know, they wouldn't do it to KP, obviously, but if Dallas was doing this to like Luka or Dennis Smith Jr. before him, I would be screaming at the top of my lungs, like, what are you doing? Don't waste this. Don't be stupid and, you know, waste the kid and lead him to injury or something like that just because you want to be Mr. Get Off of My Lawn. I digress. I'm off on a tangent. That only stood out to me because I knew the Knicks were coming up in a couple games. So that's all my time for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.